about um, making a plant bog. This is my second plant bog that I'm making and I'm going to be using the right soil. I've got three plants that I've, well, three pitcher plants and one Venus flytrap, which I'm going to put in here. So yeah, just stay tuned, watch how I do it and you can give it a go as well. Yeah, so here we've got peat moss and it's not compost because compost has nutrients in it and all these nutrients would kill these carnivorous plants because they don't even grow in soil where there's it's high in nutrients. They grow where there's no nutrients in the soil, etc. So I would use peat as well, but I don't have peat, so I'm making a mixture of gravel and peat moss. And I'm hoping it'll do the same thing and always hang water. Who knows? Let's see. So let me just fast forward this. I keep repeating so the peat moss stones and I keep mixing it in, etc. And then I am gonna start thinking about what plants I'm gonna put in and where I'm gonna put them. And yeah. So I'm nearly done now. And I finished my bag of gravel, which I bought for my fish tank. I'm gonna be making a fish tank video too soon, so stay tuned. So here it goes, my first Saracenia plant. It's a tall picture plant. It's mostly green. It has um, a thin maroon slash red vine veins on it. Super cool. And um, yeah, and I've got, I've got another picture plant. This one, um, as you can see, it's got more maroonish and red areas and the pictures are more wider. They open a lot more, which is really cool. It's, it's varied from the first one, as you can see on the left. And yeah, just make sure that you're not damaging the roots when you're pushing it in. Yeah, you don't want to damage the roots. And I'm actually trying to make these plants survive because they were in their pots and they kept drying out quickly because obviously when you have a smaller pot it's going to dry out quickly. So I want to put it in this big pot, leave it outside and yeah, hopefully it retains the rainwater a lot more and it's easier when it's getting rainwater. In London it rains all the time. Anyway, here's my third picture plant. It's, it's even wider than the one I put on the far left and it's got, it's, it hasn't got large maroon leaves but it has loads of maroon, very noticeable maroon veins and markings on the leaves. So cool. And this one is drying up. As you can see, like if you look in close, like this is a brown crispy bits at the top, but it's fine. I know the plant is alive mostly and it will rejuvenate soon. So yeah. And here goes my last plant, which is a Venus flytrap. And I purposely wanted to put another plant in this bog because I didn't want it to just be a pitcher plant bog. I wanted it to have more variety. And I had too many carnivorous plants. If I didn't shove it in here, I'd have to shove it in another one. And I don't think I had too much space. I can't be making, can't be filling my garden up with carnivorous bogs. There'll be no bugs left in London, girl. But yeah. Here it goes. Just don't hurt those traps. And like, there's even one trap. I fed it a bee and it like ate the bee. New traps started sprouting up from the plant. But the original trap, which had that bee in it, it turned black. It started to go moldy and stuff. Start to rot. And something cool about these carnivorous plants is that they release antioxidants because they grow in like swampy, bog boggy areas. So there might be decay there. I don't know. But yeah, they make their own antioxidants, etc., to protect themselves. And here I am decorating it with stones because it looked too boring. I want it to become like a mini world. I want the soil to have moss on it. And here I am watering it with deionized water. You can't have normal hard water in the tap. Here it is after a few weeks, as you can see. There's new pictures, even the crispy picture plant, the Saracenia, even that's doing good. There's new pictures and I can cut off the dry ones, but I don't want that. Take care guys, subscribe for more.